Welcome back, my friends. For those of you who saw the first video with Steven and I talking about the overview of punch press and laser cutting, we promised you that we're going to show you some parts and show you the guts of the machine. Well, in this video, we're going to look at the parts and what laser cutting combined with punch press can do for you and why it can save time and money and resources and, well, we're going to get into it. So Steve, we got a whole sheet behind us and we get to show the audience today some of the difference between the thicknesses of laser cutting versus punch pressing versus the time it takes to do it plus the long in the machine maybe what happens is the machine starts to break down over time that comes with a laser but don't let me be too long-winded like I always am. Let's talk about these parts. Firstly, the differences of the traditional punch press versus laser cutting and what combining them into one does for a machine. Yeah. So basically what what historically the punch press has done as it's been your your punch press you're forming and it's been your laser in a way where you're you're cutting the material, you're making the holes, you're doing all these forming forming parts, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to eliminate the cutting part because we found something that is has come out called laser that's doing that a heck of a lot more efficiently than what we could ever do with a punch press. So by combining these processes, we're able to take that process away, the contouring we call it, and we're able to still do all of the unique capable things, small holes, forming work, different things that the punch press is still viable and necessary for, and allowing us to, to take those processes and turn that into the finished parts without all of the different deburring processes, without all the different marking tool processes and marking marks in the material. So that's that's the real goal behind this, and that's why this, this piece of equipment's been exciting. Yeah, well, let's invite the audience in. Come on in here, guys. Let's take a look at, take a look at this. When we're talking about what you're describing here, Steve yeah. I see some very thin areas and I see some thicker areas where overall on this piece on That's the right. far side over there it That's looks right. like one might have been lasered and one might have been punched when we talk about nesting a sheet of a bunch of different jobs that comes into play doesn't it absolutely yeah so this is more your traditional uh, I guess you would call it slitting or parting tool that's making this perimeter and here you have that quarter inch by say one and a half inch parting tool hitting this, these parts individually. And you can see that we've got a significant gap there that's creating material that's being removed and lost and also that's having to hit that material that many times in typically an auto index station which is a rotational a rotational station that allows you to do that in 360 degrees. It's great, it works. However, when you have the capability of removing this process and putting it into a into a laser, now we've got a much tighter nest, a much tighter kerf we call it or a much tighter cut. And what this allows us to do is we it allows us to, to nest these parts in closer. It allows us to do some very unique things like bringing multiple parts in, in, inside of, of others and having that ability to where we're able to bring all of that together in a tight format. So now we can get more parts into this sheet. We're having to waste less scrap. And at the same time, we're not having to force ourselves to make these little tiny holes with a laser. We're turning on that beam or you're turning on the assist gas, spending the consumable cost. Instead, we have a little quarter inch round punch that we've had in the shell for a million years. Just hit that sucker like that, and now we got the hole we need. And then same thing with this offset, same thing with these louvers here, these lances, these knockouts, all of these forming capabilities. You cannot do this on a laser. So now we've got the ability, extrusions, we got the ability to do all these things with one machine, in one process, in one program, in this nice simulated setup that we have here. And it's all being done in the way that the, the, the customer, the operator feels is the, is the best way. So you can choose. We want to punch it. We want to form it. We want to we want to laser cut it. It's totally up to you. I mean, you made it, you kind of summarized it really well. And I have a ton more questions, but I think you've answered most of them already. However, I'm going to keep diving in because I always have to know more. And the parts that I want to ask you are when it comes to cost and when it comes to time. And time often is cost as well. But 
A punch press used over and over and over again creates a lot of wear and tear that a laser might not provide as well as secondary operations that might go into some of the punch press operations that might leave a little burr that the laser's not. Can we talk about the cost of utilizing the machine over and over again to do that same punch press operation versus a laser plus secondary operations now being reduced? Can we talk about those two topics? Yeah, I mean the, the, the beauty of a punch press is when you make your initial tool investment, those punches last a really long time. So you, you just sharpen them, you shim them, and then you keep going. So when you make that investment and the cost of punching the material, that's why people do it. That's why some have not gone to lasers because it's, it's just simply cheap to do and they've already made that initial investment, right? So, so you, you, again, you, you, you gotta decide whether cost or time is more important but, uh, but you don't have to choose. You can make that decision based on what it is that you're doing, based on the job, based on am I doing one part, am I doing thousands of parts? It can all be done. And, and, and we've even found a way to incorporate another process in this, so now we have four processes, and that's we, we include a standard tapping unit, four station tapping unit on this machine. So now we're even able to take another process which is done by a mill or done by some tapping machine and we can even bring that to the, to, the, to the fold. So we've got four processes. We've got punching, obviously, forming, laser cutting and tapping. We've got four processes, one machine, one program. Don't need to bring it from one, to, one machine to the next. It's all right here in this, this compact design. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up tapping because I thought I had seen a couple of holes in here over here. Yep. And I was like, wait a second. Tapping as well? Lasers can't tap, punches yep. can't really tap, but you're tapping also. We're tapping also. This tapping unit has four stations. It's a standard machined or formed tap. It can be either one, and we can range anywhere between M2 and M10 taps. And the average time for this tapping unit to, to make a tap is about three seconds. It's fast. That's incredible. Yeah. So we really are combining multiple operations, reducing time, and I have to ask you, even though we're standing here, and this is gonna be, it's not rhetorical, because I'd like you to answer it, but I already know the answer, and I think the audience probably does as well, but it's worth bringing up, is the automation side of things, right? Because I don't wanna pick up a, a big old sheet of metal, and I don't wanna remove a big old sheet of metal. In fact, I've had conversations with people who, investing in machines like this, have reduced the overall insurance of people's back pains going down because they've invested in automation. Can you talk about the automation side of this as well? Absolutely, yeah, the, the, the big thing is is the sheets are getting larger. You know, customers want to buy and standard sheets. I'm not, sheets. I'm and not getting not, larger. We're not getting any, any bigger and our backs aren't getting any, right. any stronger, that's right. So when we can, when we have offer a machine has this capacity, the one thing that customers are, are gonna get tired of is moving sheets manually back and forth having two, three, four operators that are having to manhandle this thing. So now what we want to do is we want to give customers the opportunity to use the specialized sheet metal fabricating automation equipment that we've built for years and years and years and continued to evolve over the years. And now you can do things like you can, you can go from as simple as taking a, a nested sheet like this and you can take a, a, a blank sheet, put it on, the, the loader will load it up. It's got a central end locator over here which is ready and, as the machine is built. And, and that's, that's the cell ready component of it. And you can put that blank sheet on and then it'll take that finished parts sheet that's got all these tab parts off and then it'll just stack the same number of, of finished parts and then you move that to the next, next setup. We also have tower loaders that can load 8, 12, 14 shelves of just blank sheets and they can also handle finished parts as well, tab parts. The best thing that we offer is going to be our sorting loader and that's the, that's the, real, the real future of this is we are focused on finished parts. That's the goal. We, wanna, we want the parts that come off this machine to be ready to go, to go wherever they're going in the next process. So now we have a loader that has a capability of anything between three inches by three inches all the way up to a five by 10 sheet and everything in between. It's a suction cup loader and it can take these individual parts, forms or not, and set them on a pallet, set them on a cart, even drop them into a bin. It can be done and it can be set up accordingly and it's all done in the program. So you program it for, for what it's doing, the loader, the loader will set it up in the same nest on a, on a pallet and it just makes the process even more, more of a flow and less people require, less engineering time, less required 
time that's that's needed for the for the finished parts. Yeah, when I was a much younger man, I was lifting four by eight sheets of wood over and over again, and I was that loader and part separator. Nope. Not great. No. I promise you, it's not great. No. So having automation like that, and as you said, being able to individualize because you mentioned earlier, which I think is significant to reiterate, is when you're nesting, it doesn't have to be one repetitive part over and over again. It can because you're combining four different operations, you can have an entire complex piece put together ready for assembly and automatically taken off of the machine and separated so that somebody can it's really just taken all of the the manual workout all of this wasted material that we used to have and, and allowing us to do more and combine that with the material cost savings as well it, it really just seems like a win to me yeah, and, and the other thing to consider is is this machine maxes out at a quarter inch plate. Ah, okay. So, so we're not just playing with this thin not, stuff today. We're, we're getting is, we're getting thicker. This is showing the this is showing the cool speed of the machine, but we can get much thicker, and, and that that even becomes more of a challenge. So now, when you start getting into this situation, laser has become more prevalent in thicker gauge material. Punching is challenging in thicker gauge materials. So again, it's all part of the process of. How do we get less people involved in making a finished part? How does that process become less problematic for moving it around from one, one, one location to the next? And how can we do all these cool things that are very applicable to most sheet metal job shops, all the way up to the big OEMs and everything in between? And this is, this is the machine for that. Should we show the audience the guts of this thing now? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. For everyone who's watching, we're going to step inside the machine now. Stay tuned to the next video so you can see what those, well, well, it's all being done, which makes this a superior machine for punching and laser.